Welcome to the Hollywood Persona Podcast. Here are your hosts, Mitch and Ann. Hello and welcome to the Hollywood Persona Podcast. My name is Mitch and I'm here with Ant. How are you, Ant? Great, man. Can't wait to talk to you. We got so much movie stuff to talk about. We are backlogged. like <laughs> Really backlogged. I wrote down some movies we we're going to talk about this week, which I will say them now, is Long Legs. We're going to talk about The Watchers, In a Violent Nature. Uh, Ant is going to talk about Horizon, an American saga, the... Uh, Oh, Ke- Kevin name? Costner. Yeah, Kevin Costner movie. Um, he also got to see a early screening of a movie that will be out in two weeks called Kneecap. So he's going to give us a little, um, you know, brief rundown on that. And I'm going to talk about a little indie that you guys should watch called New Life. Um, cool. There's a ton of other movies that we want to talk about. Uh, and yeah. Which we'll we've get just, to. Yeah, we've just been busy, uh, you know, but... I, uh, my film vault, I got fully funded. I got like the GoFundMe, you know, the GoFundMe that I would do to go to Los Angeles. Yeah. Fully funded. Uh, $1,000. So, um, that'll buy my tickets and my board, you know, room and board. Right. And that's, that's great, man. I'm so excited for you. When is that August something? It's like two weeks from now. Yeah. August 4th. So, Ooh, wait. So how long is it? Because I might be gone right before you leave in order to record next. So yeah, when are you back from that? August It'll 6th, be like, 8th? I think it's going to be like the 2nd to like the 5th or 6th. Okay, or the 5th is a Monday. So yeah. Okay, okay. all right. We'll be good. Because I get back. I'm going on a family vacation trip that I do every year. This will be our 36th year of doing this trip. Oh my gosh. Um, I will be back Saturday the 4th third so yeah we should be good so, so we, we will be going another probably a little bit of space without an episode um we're gonna i'm gonna try to see um deadpool versus deadpool and wolverine uh but i got a funeral this week and blah 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 so uh it's kind of a lot yeah, of place you can't do it you can't but yeah we're gonna try and put we're out try. a deadpool wolverine episode for this coming friday when it comes out if not, um, I really want to do some like live stuff from the Film Vault show and talk to some of my friends about movies. Maybe I could put something together and post it. I don't know. I'll figure right. it out. But... Yeah, no, we're not. We're, don't don't hold us to it, please. Yeah, don't. We're gonna try. Jesus, like, don't pressure us, okay, guys? Come on. <laughs> um, I want to talk about the box office draft because, unfortunately, Ant, I have to tell you, it's pretty much over. So as you guys know, we've been doing this box office draft and we have the three, we have like the four quarters of the year. So we did January, February, March, and then we, we just did April, May, no, April, May, June. Yeah. Yeah. No, cause we're in July. Oh, so no. So January, February, March, April. Yes. May, I did this June, last July, time. August. <laughs> so July is ended, but some of our movies are still playing. Let me just give you a little rundown. My studio was The Fall Guy, Tarot, If, Back to Black, The Strangers Chapter 1, Inside Out 2, A Quiet Place Day 1, Kinds of Kindness, and then The Bomb You Gave Me, which was Thelma. You have Silver, Civil War, Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes, Abigail, Challengers, The Garfield Movie, Furiosa Mad Max, Bad Boys Ride or Die, Horizon, An American Saga, and daddy which was the bomb I gave you. Yep. So, and basically because of Inside Out 2, I am winning by a landslide. Right, right. I don't expect that to change. So, so far, my studio <laughs> has made one billion five hundred and seventy-eight <laughs> million three hundred and sixteen. stop at one billion. Thousand. Yeah. And your studio has made... A fair amount, eight hundred and five thousand. What? No, uh, eight hundred and five million. <laughs> I'm what? sorry. So, I mean, your studio is made. A okay, good so that's that's count. yeah, that's not bad. We each only have two movies in the red. Yours are Horizon and American Saga and Daddio, and mine are Thelma and Kinds of Kindness, which 
had a $15 million budget. So, and it's only made 12 million worldwide. So it hasn't really. Yeah, I saw a, I saw a quote. So do not believe this. This is probably not true because it was a headline, but it was like, William Costner might have, or not William, Jesus Christ. Kevin Mm -hmm. Costner might have to sell his house to cover the losses. But, but the con, like the first comment under that was something like, yeah, that's his California house. He has a 12-acre giant <laughs> ranch in Texas or something like that. So who knows? So it is a little surprising that he would bet mm-hmm. so much on that. Um, mm-hmm. The studio has said, well, I guess I can cover all this when I talk about it in a minute. Yeah, and I have some things actually to say about it too when we get there, just okay. from things I've read and stuff too. But so. yeah, so back back to the box office game where yeah, we are each so, heads of studios, you are. I don't know. Me. I so I still have to watch that movie for you because you, you won the first quarter. I think um, I've won this quarter. I it's would, pretty sold up. Do we, wait, I say will, that again. do we have any movies left each? What What'd you say? Well, I mean, you still got Horizon in theaters and Bad okay. Boys in theaters, but that both are done. And I've got a Quiet Place and okay, Inside okay. Out too. All right, um, yeah, yeah. Theater. So we're done. So yeah, so we're pretty much done. You got to assign me something. Uh, yeah. So I will have that for next episode. I okay, that's think cool. About that. Yep, but, yep. Um, I'll just say in in the first quarter you won with eight hundred and eight million, and now I'm losing with eight hundred million. Eight hundred and five million, <laughs> and I lost last quarter with three hundred and twenty one million. So just kind of crazy. Inside that out too. Just goes to show you, yeah. I mean, I thought once you got Furiosa and then you were and then you talked up Bad Boys Ride or Die, I thought I was out. Because I didn't if Inside Out 2 was bad, it wouldn't have made this money. Right. So anyways. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Inside Out Right overperformed by a lot. And it's still Yeah. And it's still Actually I'll mention we're about to talk about box office for this past weekend. You get into box office and Yeah, uh, all right. So this past weekend, um so surprisingly Twisters came in number one by far, exceeding expectations. So I pulled this, so I worked it with CinemaScore. Okay. And, and? Um, the theater was full Thursday night. The theater was full Friday night, both Dolby and IMAX screens. Um, and so it made almost as much as Dune Part 2 made opening weekend, which is insane. Dune Part 2 made $82 million opening weekend. This movie has made 81 So that's pretty, pretty impressive. Um, and then Despicable Me came in second. Despicable Me 4, sorry, came in second. Um, and then Inside Out 2, again, for its third week, um, made another $12 million. And then right behind that, surprisingly, which is a movie we're going to review, Long Legs. That movie yeah. has really done well. So it's made $44 million domestically so far, which is fantastic for a, yeah. a horror movie that's only been out for two weeks. $44 yeah. million. Um, and That's then a quiet crazy. place day one is number five. Fly me to the moon, cratered, uh, in its I guess it's fifth week. That doesn't seem right. I just copied and pasted this past weekend. No, oh sorry, that's not right. It's it's in its second week. That's its yeah. That's its last week number. It was in fifth last week. Now it's in sixth. So yeah, you, yeah. You did, oh, okay. You, you did fine. I was reading it wrong. Got you. I got you. Yeah. No, um, I actually said that earlier, so that's probably what confused. Yeah, me. but so yeah, that one dropped an astounding sixty-five percent, which is, I mean, pretty high. Who I didn't really like thought that movie was going to do well? Like, who... no, it's such a streaming movie these days. And it came in so late. The marketing started so late. It all of a sudden came out of nowhere, and I'm like, and then and then the trailers. You like you said, you just saw a billboard for it the other last day. night. Last night, yeah. I'm driving into Atlanta, into the city, and uh, I see a billboard for it, and it says Scarlett Johansson, you know, to try and get people to watch it. Yeah. Um, but. but yeah, so that's that's in uh, fifth place. The only other interesting box office note I want to mention is the bike riders jumped back into the top 10. Wow. Um, because this is actually, this is kind of interesting, and I don't, I bet you don't know this, Mitch. So oh, the bike riders had fallen out of the top 10. Both you and I liked it. Did you see it? I loved it, yeah. Yeah, I thought it was great. Really, really Three fun, and a cool half. movie. Tom Hardy. Four, four and a half, sorry. Michael Shannon. Um, so it it got back into the top ten, and here's how they did it. It's pretty clever. So there are a small number of drive-in theaters around the country, mm. one of which is in Cape Cod, where I'm going on vacation, and which is where I think I saw the original Jurassic Park when I was a kid. We um, have one. I have one, like, just 
25 minutes from me. Nice. Yeah. yeah. I don't go to them very often. Me I neither. might go next week when I'm up yeah. on vacation with my cousins. But uh, what those theaters will do is they'll package that movie mm -hmm. with the other movie that is showing. So, for example, the bike riders will be showing after Despicable Me 4. So, someone, so families will come in in their car to buy a ticket for Despicable Me 4. And half that money has to go to the bike riders because you don't pay for two tickets. You pay for one car for the night. Yes. So I, I thought that's interesting. I think that's why the bike riders jumped back up. That's no, I'm glad you, uh, that you know that I just kind of was wanted to see what is, it's just, I've gone, you know, quite a bit. I remember I saw the dark Knight rises in, in, um, drive in, which like, it's not like, I keep saying like, but it is definitely not the ideal place to watch a movie. No, but, but some movies do well in that format, right? So right now, um, I could have caught the 935 show on screen one of Twisters, and then the bike riders was playing after it. There you go. <laughs> so, and well, then proven. Despicable Me 4 was playing on screen two with Inside Out 2 after it. Oh, isn't that funny? Yeah. I, so oh. I heard that. I didn't know if it was actually true, but... Yeah. Um, I guess it is. So there is it in listeners. If you are at all curious, there is a great documentary I saw in 2022 called back to the drive-in mm. and my drive-in in, in Wellfleet, Massachusetts, which is on Cape Cod was featured in that movie. So I was, um, probably because of COVID, right? A little bit. Exactly. They yeah. had a boom during COVID and, uh, and I did go to a drive-in in Chicago during COVID. I did too. I can't Cause I was like, I need my movie fix, you know? It's the only thing that was funny about it is because you had to get still had to get out of your car to go get snacks. So like you had to go wait in line and everybody had masks and stuff. But that was it. I think I paid like how much? Did, I think I paid fifty dollars. Me and my friend Brandon went. Yeah. It was like fifty dollars for VIP, which just meant like front row. Yeah. And but you uh, want that front row? We, we he and I drank and smoked so much <laughs> that we should not have driven home. Oh, you know what we saw? We saw Step Brothers. Oh my god, that would have been so, so awesome. We we fell out of the car laughing. It was yeah. quite a good memory. So yeah. So that's so, the box office. Just one thing, uh Twister, the original in 1996, and I never would have guessed this, made 500 million dollars worldwide. And that's wow. in 96. So that's probably I, 800 million or more. Yeah, so I'm not I guess I I was surprised by the like the marketing for Twisters was very good though. It was. So that, that was and the only Glenn thing Powell that... is super hot right now. Yeah, yeah. Um, True. Oh, this is an also also interesting fact about Twisters, box office related. So this fits. Mm -hmm. Usually, when movies come out, the most money made per theater, so per actual location, is yeah. always New York or Los Angeles. So it's either okay. it's either the um, the L.A. on Lincoln Center, which has the giant okay. IMAX, or one of the. Ooh, oh, sorry. New York Lincoln Center or one of the Los Angeles movies. So it's usually one of those. This time, guess where it was? Oklahoma. Oh my Most god. Most money that's made awesome. for Twisters was in Oklahoma, which is exactly where this movie is set. Yeah. Um and that's amazing. a lot of this money a lot of this movie's money came from what they call here the flyover states, the cities yeah. between LA yeah. and New York. Um a lot of people resent that and think that's a derogatory term. Whatever. I mean New York is the most populated city in probably this continent. And then LA is probably the second or third. So yeah, um, it's just the way it goes. I yeah, used to, that's where people there, are. Yeah. There used to be a con uh, country song called flyover States. Yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> so, so yeah, so it's interesting. So, and you know, Top Gun <coughs> Maverick also did really well in the quote flyover States. So it's yeah. kind of a cool signal to studios that says, if you make a movie for and market mm -hmm. it to, the other 48 states and Canada, then, yeah. um, you know, you might make good money from it. I went to Top Gun, like, you know, first week, and I was probably closer to the youngest person there. Like, you know, really? and it was full. Like, like I was sitting around mostly people older than me. There was obviously younger, but the sure. theater was like full. Like it. Yeah. Like, a they're realizing that they need to market, which I'm surprised Horizon didn't do I better. I was just going to bring this but, up. But we can talk about that later. So let's get into Long 
Legs. Please. Um, so Long Legs is a 2024 movie. Uh, in pursuit of a serial killer, an FBI agent uncovers a series of occult clues that she must solve to end his terrifying killing terrifying killing spree. Micah Monroe is that FBI agent. The killer, and this is not a spoiler, um, but like, okay, well, I'll just say the bad guy is obviously Nicolas Cage. They they open the scene with him showing, they open the movie with showing that he is, you know, the bad, creepy guy. So yeah, uh, Blair Underwood is also in this along with Alicia Witt and... Kiernan Shipka, that's about it. Yeah. Uh, so... Yeah, is uh, anything else I should say about this movie? Before Who we... directed it? Do you know? Oz, some uh, yeah, Osgood Perkins. So Osgood he, Perkins, he's the guy that did the Black Coat's Daughter and uh, Gretel yeah. and Hansel, which was an right. okay horror movie yeah, that came out okay. during COVID. Do you remember that one? Yeah, I do. I I I, I was like, man, I haven't thought about it since until you. Brought I hadn't it either, up. but I remember it had some pretty creepy visuals and like for sure, for yeah. Sure. And the woman I think was eating the children in that movie. Yeah, which is always right. fun. Yeah, yeah. That's always which, fun. Yeah, that's what Hansel and Gretel is about, right? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, so Oz, Oz Perkins is the director and which, writer. Sorry, I have to interrupt you again. Do you know who Oz Perkins is? Is he related to someone? Yes. Who? He is the son of the man who played the psycho in the movie Psycho. Oh, Norman Bates. So yes, oh he my played God. Norman Bates. Who played Norman Bates? Something Perkins, obviously. Carl? So that's who, and I know and it's funny because in Maxine, have you seen Maxine? Yeah, we reviewed. Oh it yeah, we reviewed week. it. Sorry. Um, yeah, yeah Anthony, Maxine. Anthony Perkins. Anthony that Perkins. is so interesting. Oh, wow. you didn't know that? You hadn't heard that yet? I did not know that. <laughs> yeah, so that's him, right? Yeah. Which is cool. Which is cool. That's kind of yeah, a cool whatever. Thing. Like we're gonna talk like sometimes nep- nepotism works and sometimes it doesn't. And we're gonna talk about a time it works and we're gonna talk about a time it doesn't on this episode. <laughs> True. Um, this is a horror central episode. Yes, yeah, so long legs. Um I guess I'll just jump into my thoughts. Or what'd you hear about this movie going in? What was the marketing like to you? So I saw I feel like I saw it like Maybe like a week late, but it was still like kind of just building that buzz. Like this belt built that buzz early. I mean, slowly. Sorry. And, yeah, it definitely did. It did a great job. And then all of a all of a sudden, it was like, oh my god, long legs, long legs. So I'm kind of glad I saw it when I did because there's a few people who saw it like around that time and like the hype and stuff who have been like, oh my god, we get it, long legs. It wasn't that good. And I 100% agree. I just talked to another moderator yeah. of the Reddit <laughs> board, The Big Picture, which is one yep. of the bigger movie podcasts out there. Um, and he said he saw it and he was a little let down by it because he'd heard yeah. so many good things about it. And I was like, dude, I feel you because I completely agree. I think he had heard too much. The hype got too big. Yes. And that's I, I hate when that happens. That sucks. And that's one thing that I think avoiding trailers does a benefit yes. for me. And you too. I know you avoid some. I'm really um, trying to avoid like Deadpool trailers because they've had like six trailers now, and I'm. Like, I still haven't seen a full Deadpool trailer. Oh, I'm good happy for you. It. They're yeah. just spoiling every every joke. It's like, come on, right? Come on, let us see. But it. you know what this movie reminded me of, and and like this one got big, and that one didn't. Is to catch a killer. Or do you remember that with Shailene Woodley? Of course, I love that movie. Yeah, man. we both did. But see, that one never got the hype and it never made it big. Good point. But if that one had made it big, people would have been like, yeah, it's just your run-of-the-mill cop serial killer drama. Yeah, like an episode of uh, ER or SVU, right? Right. And we were kind of saying that about Maxine. But this one has gotten big. And I think it's gotten big for all the right reasons. Me too. Me too. Uh, Obviously... Michael Monroe, Michael Monroe, we can obviously not say enough good things about this wonderful actress. Yeah, she's um, great, right? Um, it let's... Follows uh, obviously was like her kind of breakout. The Guest, uh, Watcher was another good um, horror movie she was yeah. in. She's... Honey Boy she was in, right? Oh, yeah. She was in I... God, God is a Bullet. 
And I find she kind and of... And dis- Greta. Actually, I saw her in Greta, too. Oh, you know what? I never saw that one. What about the bling ring? Did you ever see that with her I in did. it? I did. I didn't haven't know seen she that. was in that. I, yeah. She's one I of the girls that. in that. Yeah. Interesting. Um, But I, I want to say that I don't think she was that great here. Well, let me say this. I didn't really? like I didn't like her that much. Okay. We didn't learn enough about her. She was so cold and abrasive and unapproachable in this movie, man. And that's yeah. fine because I think that's realistic. But think- for a... A movie we watcher, have... I was like, "Girl, I want to know you. What are you? What are you about?" I guess I know what you're feeling, but huh, man, I it... I feel the complete opposite. I Damn, think. really? I felt like we got a good kind of understanding. You know, like we got a lot about her. Like her, you thought and her... she was approachable? Oh, definitely not. I don't oh, think okay. she was like likable. You know, but I, but like, and definitely not approachable. Like there were times where I'm like, "Girl, what are you doing?" Like. She could. She should have called the cops like a couple times and gotten help, gotten back up. And I was like, yeah, because, because I think she and I don't want to talk out of turn, but I feel like she was kind of maybe on the spectrum in some way. OK. Or there might have been something there. So they because, tested her for paranormal or is that a spoiler? Um, I don't I guess not. I guess it happens in the first 20 minutes or so. Yeah. Like she, she's given it some kind of test for. She I looks know, some at a mental, house. Some mental test. It's very early. She looks at a house and she says, the guy we're looking for is in there. And this isn't the case with Nicolas Cage. It has something else. And, yeah, it's and a little yeah, yeah. yeah, they're just out on the street and and she just knew this. And then they start testing her for stuff. So she's a little off, a little odd. Um, so she kind of does things a little differently. Obviously, like the biggest comparison this movie has been made to is Silence, Silence of the Lambs. Especially because I almost feel like Micah was not, she almost did herself a disservice by playing the role too close to what Jodie Foster did in Sounds of the Lambs. Oh, I see. I see what you're saying, yeah. It just, it wasn't different enough to like have her, like it, but I still think this is not Silence of the Lambs. No, it is definitely not. Not at all. Nowhere near it. Nowhere near it. But I feel like it is. 2020 like the 2020s version of silence of the lambs like uh, you know what i mean sure sure but let me but let's With let's, the gore let's do that comparison and this and the horror more horror definitely and this was scary this movie it scared is. me creepy really you know i was talking to my mother and sister about this recently both of them so my mom she loves thrillers and my sister loves horror straight horror gore so was it everything too scary for your mom? Um, I don't know yet. So she hasn't seen it yet. She, you know, oh, she'll, okay. she'll wait till streaming. But it's one I went to my sister right away. I'm like, you've got to see this immediately because she loves anything and everything: horror, gore, blood. Any like, she's yeah. a nurse too, so that might have something to do with it. But um, <laughs> I'm right there with her. Yeah, I know. I know you are. <laughs> and actually, her and I had a conversation recently about because her and I are the complete opposite in many ways, most ways we, like right. we're nothing similar. However, I thought about this recently. We both love horror and huh. I, I, I messaged her. And I'm like, why do you think that is? We're, we're nothing alike. Her and our, we're totally different. And, but we both love horror anyway. Blame your parents. <laughs> anyway, um, Micah Monroe compared to Clarice Starling, right? So Clarice, yeah. we learn a lot more about, I think, Oh, for sure. They, right? oh, we see her 100%. go through the academy, um, and she's yeah. more vulnerable, right? Yeah. Clar- and I think I think that might have made this movie a little better with Micah Monroe being more vulnerable, mm-hmm. uh, breaking down. Does she cry in this? I don't know if she. I can't remember. But anyway, I think of Clarice more as a fault. She has faults, right? She's a human. We all have faults. Whereas Micah Monroe just seems like she is the all-seeing eye. Yeah. So that's the I only just, difference I see between these two. And I think like I feel like some of your character problems beca- get explained. Oh yeah, um, yeah. And in yeah. a in a large like the way she is, like you're kinda like you eventually go, Oh, okay, I get it. Like right. you know, um God, Her- you, I really don't want to say much more. I really want to keep this. Well, I think free. we can. I think one thing we can say is we meet Micah Monroe's mother in the movie, and her mother is totally troubled, deeply yes. troubled. Yes, yes, and, and a, a psycho and a religious nut job. 
Yeah. So like you said, we like I don't think that's not a spoiler. Her mom no, is that's weird and wild. her childhood so, was rough. Her childhood was rough, ultra religious, right? So yeah. but you know, all that said, I don't want to take away from that I really like this movie quite a bit. Um so speaking, I thought are you go uh, ahead. Speaking of her mother, Alicia Witt did an incredible job, I thought, as well. Um, very, playing, very, very good. Playing her mother, playing almost like this catatonic, you know, not doing well, you know, schizophrenic. She's like a requiem kinda. for a dream type mother, you know? Yes, the yes. The one that's watching the TV. Yeah, who was that? Was Ellen Burstyn. Ellen Burstyn, yes. who I recently saw in Mother Couch, I think, actually. Oh, okay. Um, and then Blair so, Underwood was good. I don't. We don't see him enough. I thought yeah. he was good. Anyway, Alicia Witt. Alicia Witt, I didn't know, was in I Care a Lot, which I saw actually with my mom. Uh, that has Rosamund Pike. Right, and one? then every yes, and everyone's obviously talking about like this movie, and they're talking about how she played Aaliyah. Which is the um, daughter, or um, oh yeah, the... she's in Twin Peaks, right? No, um, what is uh, Timothy Chalamet's character's name in um, Dune? Uh, that would be Paul Atreides. So she played Paul Atreides' little sister. That's in right. The original, original Dune. Dune. That's right. Yes. As like a baby. <laughs> yeah, it's like a young, young. She girl. was like seven or something. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, that's what everyone's kind of like, no especially with okay. Dune coming okay. out of this year. Everyone's kind of talking about that. So, yeah. So, what? Like, tell me more. I want to hear. All right. More. So yeah. So the the other thing I was going to say was one of the strong suits were visuals. We get lots of four by three ratio views, especially early on, which helps to get you claustrophobic into this movie. We see Nicolas Cage pretty early on in a totally unrecognizable role. If you, if I didn't know that was Cage going in, I would have not known that was Cage. Yeah. Maybe a little of his voice tinge. I would have heard him and like, is that Nick Cage? But I don't know the makeup, the special effects, whatever it is. And he looks like an absolute psycho. Yeah. Just a crazy person who, if you saw walking down the street, you would move over to the other side of the street. You would cross the street. Or you would call the police immediately and say, Definitely. This like, guy's wi wiry hair, white face, you know, with makeup. So with, pale. Like peeling off. And yeah. he's talking nonsense to everyone he walks into. He's flapping his arms around. I've seen so some great memes of him. So let me ask. People are on the fence, like, oh, this way and that about his performance. It, did you like it? I loved it. I thought it was me great. Too. Me too. I know. I've heard that too. I've heard people say like, yeah. I've heard people say, was he ever a good actor? Right. Fuck out of here. He's a yeah. great actor. I want to, my dad's definitely going to watch this because he loves this, but he doesn't like Nicolas Cage. So I'm not going to say anything. Why doesn't he like Nicolas Cage? Oh, because my mom loves him and she's, he's watched so many movies okay. with him and he doesn't <laughs> think he can act, blah, blah, blah. Right? He's not good in everything, right? He's done, no, he's he's done like not. 50 trash movies in the last few like, years, but every now and then he does something great. Yeah, he fell into financial trouble a long time ago, so he started taking a lot of crappy but movies. But he was in Mandy recently. He was in... Um, the last 10 years, he's been good. Pig. Pig, he was fantastic yeah. in, right? So so I love Nick Cage in this. I love the visuals. I loved the claustrophobic 4 by 3 ratio. That goes away, but that's early on we see that. But it comes thought, back, and I liked that. It does, it does. It switches. And, and I'm not that attentive of a moviegoer yet to notice change in ratio, I listen to some oh, okay. of the critics that I like, and a lot of them like Avatar, The Way of Water, <clears throat> or Mike, not Michael Bay, maybe Michael Bay. Some of the other movies. Zack Snyder. Uh, they'll, they'll, yeah, Zack Snyder. They'll switch ratios throughout, and like I'll hear review, reviewers say, I notice the ratio change every 30 seconds. I can't. I try. I can't. I can't notice it. But in this one, I, I can't. Do. I only can when it's like that dramatic. Yeah, four change. by three. Like, so yeah. listeners, you know. <laughs> Four by three, think of an old television at your grandparents' house. Okay. That's a square. It's basically a square. Yeah. It's like the old CRT monitors used to be. Um, I thought the 90s set decor was actually done really well. The wood panels and all the houses, mm. that's very realistic to cars, how it was back houses. then. Yeah. Right? All yeah. the cars here were set or um, period appropriate. Yeah. And um, yeah, it just gave a good vibe. It gives you a good vibe feeling of that time period in the 90s in the winter. Somewhere in New England. Actually, I don't remember where this is set. Do you know? No, look it up because I'm going to talk just briefly. Um, 
No, I'm not, because I completely forgot what I was going to say. You were talking about the 90s. Oh, yeah, I was going to say, like, the hairstyles, everything. Um, Kiernan Shipka has a neat little role in this movie. Um, you would actually know her to see her. Uh, and yeah, why she, do I know her name? What What is she from? Um, why? I should have known you were going to ask that. So it's set in Oregon. Set yes. in Oregon. Okay. 19, oh, and actually, oh my God, I'm so wrong. I'm embarrassed. No, no, no. Never mind. It's 1990s. Okay. The opening um, scene is 1970, but. Actually, Kiernan Shipka was in, is in Twister. She plays a character named 80, but she's also the main girl in Totally Killer. Oh, was she um, in Honey Boy? I don't. She was the lead in The Chilling Adventures of Sabrina, which I'm sure you never watched. But Nope. Um, so that's, she's, she's up and coming and I thought she was really good. She's maybe got about like five minutes of screen time, but, uh, she plays a girl kind of in like a mental ward that our lead character goes to visit. Ah, uh, okay. And she, I don't know. She's, it's really good. Um, so yeah. So I don't know. Did you have, have any, I really yeah, I have like, a couple, I have a couple yeah. other things to say. Um, there were some really nice transitions where we yeah. zoom into an eye and then that eye turns us into looking out into a scene in a house. I have to mention this. Uh, listeners, if you end up watching it, this is great for multiple viewings because a lot of these shots are wide and there's not many close-ups, right? So like this is a close-up, a wide shot would be like this, me all the way back, <laughs> right? During the movie, you are like, looking around the frame of the screen because our our character is centered in the middle of the shot but there are creepy shit showing like faces yeah. or something in the dark and i thought that was done so well very creepy like very subtle this and, movie um, yeah somehow does like makes certain things creepy that other movies just can't like the barn scene like they go up in this barn and the barn is completely empty and I was creeped out. I was like, what's going to happen? And it's like, you know, it's the cinematography. It's it's dark. It's And these are the kind of movies I love. I love dark and dreary movies that like, you know, nothing great is happening. It's all like. Yeah, it, yeah. And we and, and, a, and a cat doesn't jump out every two seconds. Right. Or someone doesn't open the refrigerator, then close it. Then someone's standing behind it. We've seen that yes. in the movie recently. Smile had that in, right? Yes. And then, Such like, a common jump scare. The, um. Yeah, there's the okay. ending I didn't expect. Yeah, and I heard a couple people not liking the ending. I thought it was great. I thought it was well done. Yeah. Very yeah. well written. But the last thing I want to say, this is a question to you, Mitch. What is with the Bill Clinton imagery in this movie? We yeah. see, We see Bill Clinton's face, whether it's on a poster on a wall or a framed picture. Mm. Is that just to set the timeline or is that supposed to mean? I, I, we see Bill Clinton think... a couple times. Do you think Oz Perkins is, you know, all about the Epstein Island and apparently Bill Clinton was there? And, oh, it's and, like they're uh, and demonic since, lizards. But no, since like, you know, our our bad guy like um, Long Legs is kind of into little girls, right? So I don't know. Maybe he was making Okay, that, that could be. You're right. Maybe he was. Be. I don't know if it was sinister or if it was just to set the timeline. I don't know. Right. It could. It could very well. E like very but easily was, have been a setting the yeah, timeline thing. It yeah. was very okay. obvious. Like that's very... one thing I need to figure out. Yeah, it was like a very bright photo of Bill Clinton is showing. Yes. Like, what does this mean? I think like almost twice didn't it at least twice. At okay. Least good. Twice. Okay. Um, All right. So that was things. long legs. Oh, just one. Ahead. Sorry. I just there was a couple things. There's obviously a point where some characters make some stupid decisions, mainly our main character, um, where she should have done certain things and she doesn't, which is kind of hard to, like, defend. And then the other thing, there is just one scene that I feel like they should have reined Nicolas Cage in a oh, yeah? little bit. If And I would have, like, liked it a little bit more. I would have, like, I, I still think this is almost like an Oscar-worthy performance. You know, in my opinion, I liked it a lot. There's just one scene in a car where he's just, he's very Nicolas Cage. And I was like, okay. Yeah. You, you went too far. But I'm four and a half on this movie. Star, four and a half stars. Um, what are you? 
I am too. Four and a half. Okay. I love yeah. this. It, this is a great horror movie. Go see horror, it, people. And, and it's a good thriller, like murder yeah. mystery, you know, stuff too. So, I mean, it's definitely got its horrific moments. Like with Right, the there's a couple, the yeah, there's a couple bloody moments, but, you know, people that love thriller and not horror, definitely worth seeing, I think. Yeah, you close, yeah there might be times. during the couple yeah. gross scenes, right? Exactly. <laughs> Um, so yeah, so, that's Long Legs 2024. It should be streaming in, I don't know, six weeks. <laughs> so let's talk about The Watchers. Um, the Watchers is directed by Ishana Shyamalan, obviously the the uh, daughter of M. Night Shyamalan. This is her first movie. She is a writer. She shares that credit with a man named A.M. Shine, or maybe a girl, sorry. Um uh, a young artist gets stranded in an extensive... Immaculate... Yeah, sorry, I need to interrupt you. Um, I think A.M. Shine was the original writer of this story. Oh, of the book. Yes, yeah. sorry. So this is based on a book. And it's actually funny. So I talked to my aunt um, after I saw this movie, and she ha- she hasn't seen it. And I told her, oh, my God, wow, it was so bad. And she says... She's like, oh, I don't know why they made it into a movie. The book was terrible. <laughs> so... um. Yeah, so anyway, so uh, young artist gets stranded in Immaculate Forest in Western Ireland, where after finding shelter, she becomes trapped alongside three strangers um, in this house thing that has like a glass front, but it's a two-way mirror. And these creatures, or whatever they are, they watch them. And that's their entertainment, apparently. Um... So yeah, this is stars. starring. Sorry, you want to go? No, I was trying to lead you into it. So okay, in it. Dakota Fanning, Olwyn Fourier, who I really like, Georgina Campbell, who you know from Barbarian, and Oliver Finnegan, who I don't really know. Apparently, he was an Outlander, or the TV show, which a lot of people like. Okay. Um. Yeah. So that's pretty much about it. Who stars in it? Yeah. So, what did you think? So I thought this was pretty bad. Right. This was pretty bad, unfortunately. Um, and, you know, we were talking about nepotism earlier. That came up somehow. Yeah. Um, this Not just good. doesn't come together. This is a like interesting source material, but... And, um, you know, the acting is all fine enough, but it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. And the first thing that comes to mind, uh, you know, before I pull up my notes is... A character's husband in this movie is presumed missing slash we know he's dead. Basically, like it's on that edge. One of these characters that the watchers and the next scene, this chick is dancing. She's like, let's have some fun. Let's dance around. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I was like, didn't your husband just die, woman? Like, how are you? what, What are you talking about? And they're not in front of the watchers. So it's just like she's just happy and gleeful that uh, last night she saw her husband and he's either missing or dead. Yeah. And then characters make stupid mistakes. Like there's a scene where they're all running or someone is running to be rescued and they look back and it's like, wait, I know that guy. When in fact they know that what they're seeing might be an illusion or shape shifting of some kind. So like they know the rules of the game, they know the rules. And this is like, Oh, this is written so that we have a scary moment. Yeah. Also, sorry, keep going. Also they're stuck in this room. (laughs) For their whole life, whenever it is, who that? John, say hi. Oh, no, I'm just kidding. Um, hi, John. Um, they're stuck in this room, which is supposedly their entire world. They know everything about it. They must be back by dark. Yeah. Then one day they're like, "Wait, let's lift up this carpet." Oh, there's this entire cab- uh. like cabinet below underground with all this resources and materials they need and information they need to know. It's like. <laughs> You were just spoiling this movie. It's for, it's been out for a while. It's on. Stream. I know. I and and we're not recommending anybody watch it. Sorry, I had my my beer wench. And even me. Dakota Fanning, she's she was good. She's she fine. Was, yeah. Maybe, but but her leaving her but her leaving her car. I know. Her and then play, going her deep playing, in the woods. Her playing different characters in bars. Like if she's depressed or, you know, so our main character, Dakota Fanning here, she is, um, Mina is her name in the movie or Lucy, whatever her, like she goes, like we see this, Mina, the opening scene, we see her go into a bar 
wearing a wig, meeting a guy at the bar, telling him she's a ballerina dancer. Uh, but somehow she's like depressed and doesn't want any interaction because of some tragic event in her past. So no, I thought this movie was really terrible and you know, it shows, I don't know why Warner brothers would have put this out like they did. This is a nepotism hire. Um, although I'm not, I'm not as negative to nepotism as we've talked about before. No, I'm not either, but especially when it's well done or whatever, but Oh man, this movie was awful. I, the first 20 minutes are terrible, really bad exposition. The dialogue is just awful. The actors, besides Dakota and Olwyn, who I really like, although in this movie she's kind of like the, you know, that character that's like, we must do this or else, you know, yeah. like the, the foreboding who knows everything. Um, but the other two actors like weren't that great the other three actors um and just nothing is set up well like there are rules but we don't like the i don't really know all the rules i don't know i don't get it like why do they come and watch these four people yeah why like okay and let's just get into spoilers yeah let's just talk about it why at the very end why do they have they waited all this time to break it down break the win the window down and of course they find that thing underneath the trap door and they watch all these videos of this guy who is who set this all up for some stupid fucking reason and he's got this well he did it to research them which okay right but then for him to go through that whole process of like i'm just saying like the building itself Come on, how would you yeah, do and, that? Yeah, and in the movie, they say that all the he would make all the construction workers eat dinner outside at night so that they would get captured. Right, What about the okay. families and friends of all those people? Yeah, never came calling. Never came home? Come on. And, and then the biggest, the biggest strike is, and I hope I'm not stepping on what you were going to say, is when they, you know, she eventually escapes and goes to the college that he is from. The administrator's like, oh, oh the students, uh, the students put together a fund to, no. So no, you brought that up back when it was in theaters, and uh, and I remembered it as soon as that scene came up. I so was expl- explain it for those who haven't seen this movie. Okay, so she escapes Dakota Johnson, um, Dakota Fanning, and the guy who s- set, set up this, this whole project up with the monsters was from a college <laughs> that had a huge, huge office, office. <laughs> like. 10, like 20 foot ceilings, 18 desks, you know, full of papers and And research. He's been been missing for like 10 years or something. More than that. Way more than that. (laughs) 30 years. And so there they say, well, the student set up a fund to keep his office pristine. Yeah. The way it is. So the university decided to not use his office for anything, which is in premium space on a very expensive university campus with his shit and books and research everywhere in this giant off. It's just, it's they could so have just stupid. boxed all that up. And, and when she came to the, yes, when she came to the university and said, Hey, I'm looking for Dr. So-and-so's research. They would have said, Oh, well he's been gone for 30 years. So we put it in the storage unit. Here's the key. If you're curious, cause we are done with it. Easy fix. Um, and then there's also like the part where they're in the basement watching those videos Where did the creature go that was in the basement that he had locked up? Good question. Because he had this one, he was doing. He captures one of the creatures. It starts morphing into to look like his wife. So maybe he lets it out. But how? So how did he he get? But how did it get up the stairs? I don't. Maybe it was in the form. Like I, I'm sorry, but it's just not well explained enough. It's just That's... not well. There's not enough, and this could have been good. I want to. I want to say this could I have agree. been good. The there's trailer. Some... I was all in on the. Yes, trailer. the trailer was creepy like, enough. You're like, who's watching what? Why would they do that? I, I love creature movies. Definitely, definitely, like, and um, and the creature design here is good enough. I would say. Yeah, but design's good, but the CGI was bad, and then, and then they keep going back to that fucking hole. Um. Oh yeah, 
John just reminded Yeah, so the creatures me. in the woods, they stay in these holes in the ground where so they can't get hit by sunlight, kind of like vampires or whatever. Yes. And um and like and like Dakota Fanning's just like, I'm going to go down one of these holes. She and, like repels down into one of the holes <laughs> during the And then day. they go back down it again and but John reminded me he takes the creature upstairs to shoot it, but then it ends up being the old lady, Madeline. And then remember Madeline at the end is yeah. like a creature. Yeah, that's, that must okay. be the one that escaped, right? That that's was his the wife. one. But then, <laughs> but then, why would she go through this whole charade of pretending to be a person and letting the watchers watch? Anyways, yeah, yeah. We're talking too much about this horrible movie. I gave it half a star. I was just not impressed. Damn, that's pretty low for you. I was really mad. I was <laughs> I gave really. It two stars. Oh wow, wow. Yeah, I gave it two stars. I thought it was. I thought it was. I thought that it looked good enough. Um, see, and I felt like it was too dark. Like besides being in that room, it was hard to see things. I guess so. I mean, I saw in the. Th I saw in a pretty saw big the theater, theater actually. Oh, you did? No, you saw it in the theater. Yeah, so it I saw might in a have been big, better. big theater. I think I was by myself when I saw it. Um, but right, yeah, wanna... so no good, no good. That's the no Watchers. Good. That's um, M Night Shyamalan's daughter. You Man, want to set up it. in a violent nature? Yeah. All right. So, in a violent nature is a movie I saw a couple weeks ago. Oh, probably more than that. Maybe, maybe a month ago. This had quite a bit of buzz, right? Um, among the horror crowd, out crowd for sure. Yeah, sorry, but yeah, among the horror crowd. So I saw. Sorry, it. I'm not trying to say like you're not wrong. No, you're but... you're right though. I did. So I saw this May 29th. Okay. Wow, so, so that was almost two months ago. Holy shit! So yeah, yeah. wow. So in the but yeah, in the horror sphere of people we listen to and watch, um, this had some good buzz about. Oh, this is super scary, different, neat. Um, so this is directed by Chris Nash and uh, written by Chris Nash as well, um, and he brought us a whole bunch of stuff that I haven't seen. A lot of um, a lot of like really bloody horror stuff. Um, shutter okay. type movies mm -hmm. um, that I haven't seen. Um, and then starring in this movie is also any, no one that I know. Do you recognize anyone from this? No, I didn't recognize anyone. These are all unknowns no. to me. So the For plot, sure. so the plot of in a violent nature is this, the enigmatic resurrection rampage and retribution of an undead monster in a remote wilderness unleashes an iconic new killer after a locket is removed from a collapsed fire tower that entombs its rotting corpse. So, the movie is like this. Something, uh, like it just said, a, a collapsed fire tower is down. Some kids come out camping. You know, I've done some camping recently, so this was kind of fun for me because I have been in the woods around some weird structures that look like maybe they don't belong or whatever. And I used to hunt, right? And so, like, I love movies where they're in the woods because it's it, those creep me out because I've been in the woods where it's pitch dark and I'm like, it's freaky, man. Yeah, you hear a noise, and you're like, was that yeah. a branch falling, or was that someone walking? <laughs> um, so these kind of knucklehead kids that was me when I was 24 uh, camping are out in the woods being assholes, and they find a locket, and they steal it. This causes this unholy monster to rise from the ground later to come and find his locket that his mom gave him or somebody gave him. Basically think of Jason from Friday the 13th. Yeah, like, yeah. Basically. And then for 85% of the movie, we are with the killer behind him on his shoulders, mm -hmm. watching him walk through the woods and killing people. But the whole movie, we are with him, except maybe... That's what I'm saying, 85%. Okay, yeah, yeah. There's a, okay. there's a scene or two right. at the end, and then in the middle where we're around a campfire with kids telling You're the story right. of this killer, right? So 85 90% is just with him. And, um, yeah, so it was kind of billed as this is a horror movie from the villain's perspective. Yeah. And it is that way in the most part. And mm -hmm. I like this. I like this. I thought this was a good bit of fun. It's kind of scary, but I think the best part of this movie is the kills. Mm -hmm. This is extremely gory. Extremely. I don't even think it was rated. It's got to be not rated or else it would have gotten an NC-17. Um, 
and there's some really creative and fun kills and machines used to murder people yeah. um in this kills that, are good. yeah they're really kind of fun for for those of us that like to see <laughs> the human yeah. body pulled apart <laughs> into different pieces um so a lot of people a lot of people that i read reviews about didn't like this because we know nothing of the killer we don't know right. his motives blah 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 but that didn't really bother me. I, I quite liked this one a good bit because it was different. The only the only problem I have mostly with this is the very end of the movie. The very end of the movie, which I won't spoil for those listening, but the end yeah. of the movie goes something kind of like this. A character is, of course, trying to make their way out of this situation, and they find some type of res, res, respute, rescue, and the last 10 minutes or so is just this character talking to some other random person. Oh, yeah. And it's kind of long. And you're like, is something going to happen? Is something? And not, nothing happened. They, they just, the end just kind of comes along. It's like, yeah. Uh, did we need the last, we, we didn't need that last scene to it be. It felt like a very indie, like, I'm trying to be different. This is an indie ending. You know, with just like some chatting, right? Yeah, yeah. Which was done, I thought, well in Love Lies Bleeding with Kristen Stewart and Katie O'Brien earlier this year. Yeah. There's some really yeah. weird and freaky stuff that happens yeah. at the end of that movie. Some abstract things. Yeah, for Whereas sure. this is just, hey, we're going to be different by maybe making you think this or that's going to happen. But credits roll. Yeah. Here we go. You know, so, so what do you think? This movie, I just wanted to start off by saying this movie has a 44% audience score on Rotten Tomato. Wow, wow. But it's like in the 80s for critics, which I understand. This is definitely like a more indie style horror. Definitely. But I really liked this movie. And I think I went in with low expectations too. Because I heard it from a bunch of people. It's like, oh my god, we get it. It's a guy walking through the woods. He's just walking the whole time. Who cares? Yeah. But just like what they did with the camera and the mood and, and the setting and the other characters. Like, like which... So, it's definitely like a video game. And these other characters, they're nobody. They're really nobody to us. Like, we do kind of get to know them, but it's almost like yeah, a cutscene from a video game. This is a video game. And, um, I, like, you know what an NPC is? A yeah, non-playable non character. character. Sure. So, those other people were NPCs. There was even a point where the guy is walking, and he's kind of walking around them, and you can hear them talking. And it is such an NPC dialogue conversation. Is like that right? You're in a video game. Yeah. They were like, well, we better hide. And like, it just felt like over the top. And I felt like it was um, on purpose. On purpose. Like he, they, they meant to do that. And I just, I thought it was really interesting. And then obviously you, they, he, they won me over with the good kills and stuff. My, yeah, my one a, thing, the, the, yo, uh, you know, this is non spoiler. The yoga scene kill is fantastic. Just yes. People were squirming, screaming in my theater. Oh my gosh, I bet. Yeah, yeah. Yes. It, oh, yeah. Um, Just something you've never seen before. And I've seen, no. we've all, we've both seen, uh, what was the really gory movies from the last couple of years? Terrifier. Terrifier. That has every gory yeah. scene you can imagine. And this was a little different. This is pretty creative. It reminded me of like Hatchet, which you probably haven't seen. I haven't seen that. It, but this is more, Hatchet is more like a B movie, but like with, like really crazy kills and stuff. So yeah, this is like would you A24. describe this as a B movie? No, this is like A twenty four meets a B movie. Good way to put it. Like Good if job. if like they had a baby, but um, because like the gore scenes, like they could feel out of place, but they're good. But I don't know. So. I my main takeaway is I liked this movie. But I would never want to see another kind of movie like this. Yeah, because, we don't need a sequel here. Right? They did what they did. It was fun. We don't need a sequel. We don't need to see him walking through the woods anymore. It was well done. End of story, right? Definitely. Definitely. I, that's a great way to put it. Um, I think, yeah. yeah and right I didn't away. mind the walking. It was kind of hypnotic. And, you know, you're just kind of wondering what was going to happen next. 
And what are you doing? Are you rooting for this killer? Are you rooting? I didn't care about any of the people he right, was hunting. Right, no, no. And you're right? right, I did hear a criticism that it was like, okay, he's way too much walking. I guess they could have cut some of the no, walking. No, I don't know. I, I, <laughs> it didn't bother me. But I, I gave it four stars. I don't. I think gave it four stars as well. That's funny. We're Same we're exact, lining up. Yep. <laughs> I don't think it was. You know, I I could watch it again, but I I, mean, I would only watch it again if I was showing it to someone. But then again, it's not one I would pick to show someone. You know, unless they had very like I would watch it with you, but you yeah. were like you know what I mean. Like who else? I don't know who I would show this to. My yeah, dad well, would, I, yeah, I mean, would be pissed. Anyone that likes horror, dad. I think I'd say, check it out. It's pretty cool. It's pretty interesting. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, yeah. For sure. So, yeah. So that's In a Violent Nature. We both uh, gave it four stars. Yes. That is streaming. I, I'll check. Yes. Uh, I'm going to talk about this movie very it's quickly. It's not streaming yet. But yeah, go no. ahead. Uh, you can rent it, though, can't you? I just saw and just watch in Letterbox that it didn't show anywhere yet. Oh. So I just want to quickly talk about this movie. It's called New Life. Um, and you can rent it right now. Um, it's I'll just say a mysterious woman on the... It's it, it starts with this woman and she's on the run. And we don't know why. And then it cuts to this other woman who is played by Sonia Welger, who I only know from Lost, the TV show. Um, so it cuts to her. And she's like CIA or something. Okay. And this other guy, Tony Amendola, you would know him to see him. He calls her and says, Hey, we got someone. We need you to we need you to track him down before they get to the Canadian border. So she gets on it, right? And and then she she is suffering from some sort of disease. Something is happening to her, but she doesn't want to quit work. And she starts to undergo this investigation and track down this girl. Okay. And this girl, this girl doesn't know why she's being tracked down. She thinks she's being tracked down for this reason, but she's being tracked down for something. And this is a mystery. Why is she bloodied? Well, I don't want to give that away. Okay. okay. Well, you know I'm, so I mean? I'm, I'm looking at the trailer and, the opening scene shows her like her face like being bloodied. So yeah, but I guess so it didn't show why. So keep going. Right there might there might it's kind of some apocalyptic stuff going on. Okay, okay. In some sort of nature, I didn't see the trailer, so I don't know what it gives away. But this is a mystery because it keeps going back and forth between the young girl and the older girl, and you're trying to understand why is this older girl trying to capture this younger girl? What did she do? And it and it slowly unravels, and I really enjoyed it. It looks pretty it's, cool. It's a three and a half star movie. Um, is it's it a based good... in Alaska? Is it? No, I'm asking because it look a lot of the backgrounds look like snow, tall mountains. I would ag- I would agree. Um, I, or but maybe northern Canada. You know, it's in the states because she's trying to okay. get to Canada because gotcha. yeah, it was filmed in the states. So because um, she's trying to get to Canada because then apparently. Well, I won't, I don't want to give that away. Yeah, yeah. But okay, okay, cool. I just want people to watch this. It's called New Life. Hopefully, it'll be streaming soon. You can rent it right now, but I recommend it. I I I like the um the mystery to it. Yeah, so. it looks like it's more of a thriller. Yeah, there's a couple horror aspects, like a like a little bit of like gory, creepy stuff, but nothing crazy. But and it looks like you can buy or rent it on YouTube. Yes, YouTube, Apple. It's. It looks to me like it's on Apple TV for a dollar ninety nine. So, I mean, two bucks. You can't go wrong for for that, right? So, cool. Yeah, that looks cool. Yeah. So, that it? No. Um. No. So I was gonna mention Horizon. Yeah. Just tell me. Yeah. Yeah. So Horizon American Saga Chapter One. It's like three hours, right? Three hours and one minute. This is self financed by. Kevin Costner. Every time a Western comes out, I think to myself, I'm tired of Westerns. I've seen enough Westerns. What more can there be? And then every now and then I'll see a good one and think, damn, that was a good Western. For sure. Um, there was a recent like Billy the Kid one. Of course, like um, um, Django Unchained and then 
Tangle and Chain. Uh, Free Ten to Yuma was another really good there one. There Will Be Blood and the one with um, the Coen Brothers one. Hold on. Okay, keep know. talking about the movie, yeah. The one with Har- Javier Bardem where he gives people a choice. To oh, um, No Country for Old No Man. Country. So the, and, the, yeah. and on and on and on, right? There's, a, there's thousands of them and a lot of them are good. Old Henry is a recent one I saw. Thank you, yes. That was great. Great. So, yeah. um, this is all right. So this, okay. So this is the plot. This is the plot synopsis. Following the story of how, how the old West was won and lost through blood, sweat, and tears of many, spanning fifteen years before, during, and following the Civil War from 1859 to 1874, and embark on an emotional journey across the country at war with itself, experienced through the lens of families, friends, and foes, all attempting to discover what it truly means to be the United States of America. That is a huge list of possible stories, plots, people. Um, and so in here you have, it's kind of quite a cast. So you have Kevin Costner, Sienna Miller, Sam Worthington, Jenna Malone, Abby Lee, Michael Rooker, Danny Houston, Luke Wilson, Ella Hunt, um, Jeff Fahey, Thomas Paine, Giovanni Rabisi, Will Patton, um, that's about I love, it. I love Will Patton. I do too, and he's he's in this very little. Did you see Minari? Yeah, that's what I was just gonna say. I love him from Minari. Where he's carrying he's... the cross, so good. yes, so 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 good. So, I uh, you know I'll keep this short. This was three hours. I went into this thinking oh, a three hour movie about the old west. I like I said, I've seen a million and in, in twelve old west movies. However, it won me over. Halfway really? through, two thirds through, I'm like, man, I kind of, I'm kind of, I'm, I actually care about these people. I want to see how this ends up. Why would Kevin Costner spend so much money on something like this? Um, a few of the storylines, so it very much jumps between storyline, 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 show, that. showing that this should definitely have been a series, right? Like Yellowstone, which is something he left to go do this. So. so- do you think he did like five scenes of Yellowstone and then he's like, well, I could do this in, in movie form because he knows movies, but then he's been in TV land for six, five, like seven years. I don't know. Can, yeah. Sorry, so uh, my, no, <laughs> I'm glad you asked that because my guess would be he did enough Yellowstone to where he thought, Hey, I should make a movie out of this. And people are of, mad at him for leaving Yellowstone. Right. Right. The Yellowstone diehards and Yellowstone was, um, extremely popular my so, parents like it's like my favorite parents show. do like it's, yeah. it's a very much a boomer uh show that people like yes and that's an audience that needs to be served right yeah so i'm hoping that this finds an audience on streaming because the second chapter was slated for august net which which has now been pulled indefinitely uh it's already been made so i'm sure we'll see it eventually but but yeah costner's good all the other actors are fun to watch in these roles Definitely mm. worth seeing. Mm. Definitely worth seeing. It's it's entertaining. I gave it four stars. I liked this more than I didn't. Um, and I really? I really need to see the second half. I need to you see gave how it these four stars. End. Yeah, it might be a three and a half. Uh, now that mm. I think about it, but no, that's interesting because like so many people are falling. You know, the reception is all over the place, but it's, it went uh, by really quickly. I think it was paced pretty well and. Lots of the shots of the old West or, you know, I'm sure they filled it in Montana, yeah. Idaho, Nebraska had me say to myself, like, man, that is so beautiful. Look at that old countryside. Like I need to get out there. I need to drive out. You know, like it just I'm, made me think about, about how beautiful the open country is. Yeah. I'm curious if this movie is three hours. I mean, I'm kind of surprised cause it's already, uh, Oh, I just had it up. It's already made like it made, Thirty-two point five million, which, I mean, so he put a hundred million dollars into both part one and part two. Okay, uh, that's that's what he put into it. Which for two movies, it's not that much. not too bad. <laughs> yeah. But for a western, like we haven't had a western make that much money in a long time. So, but that's I'm what also I'm saying, what was he thinking? Yeah, if this, but if this one goes to streaming. Bunch of people will watch it. Maybe the second one will do really well in theaters. And I think the second one has more potential because it's the conclusion. 
Yeah. For comparison, Dune 1 compared to Dune 2. Dune 1 is cool and good, but Dune 2 is way better, right? Yeah. Because we yeah. get more action and stuff. And I want to say uh, in my review that I wrote on Letterboxd, I said something like, um, it's very much like a soap opera in that we follow several little micro stories filled with argument, sex, and betrayal. That's all I, you need to know. Some, so another review I read said kind of the said soap opera. opera it's very well. uh, soap operatic, I guess is a term. And I just have to say, um, we were talking about Westerns over the last few years. Power of the Dog, obviously. Um, oh, which, right. There's another which, one. Which we didn't, I don't know, if, I don't think you loved either, and I no. didn't either. But um, probably one of the bigger ones in the last. Yeah, it did well, years. right? People yeah. went to see it, yeah. Um, all right, and then the very last movie that I wanted to mention was a movie called Kneecap. I saw it tonight. It comes yep. out August 2nd. Um, it's directed by Rich Pepiot. Pipot. Uh, don't know him from anything. And the actors, I don't know any of them from anything. But oh, wow. the movie is a really cool British, or sorry, Irish punk uh, Belfast situation. So it's like this. Scumbag kids set in Ireland are mixed in during a political turmoil event where the Irish language continues to fall in popularity and not be recognized by the larger UK as, quote, an official language. So the language seems to be shrinking. And is this of course, a true story? It is a true story. This actually, oh, wow. This actually happened. And oh. I love, I, I was kind of pulled in by this movie because the movie opens with narrator, which is one of the characters. So it's not too bad. You know, a lot of times movies yeah. have narrators because they can't show you. They'll just tell you. Um, it starts out saying most movies about Belfast start with this. And it shows all the Irish car bombs and stuff like that, that we've seen in movies like Belfast and a whole bunch of others. Um, and oh. to me, this reminded me a lot of train spotting, but a lot less drug use. So there are some drug use, but not much train spotting was about the drug scene. This is more about yeah. the political change. And one of the things that I mentioned earlier in the show that I would bring up here was Irish hip hop had not been invented yet. And wow. in this movie, they do something along the lines of saying hip hop, bla Gabe. And I, I, I felt kind of special actually as an American. You're definitely special. <laughs> no, I, I mean this. <laughs> I'm sorry. This is, this is coming from the heart. So in the movie, they say on stage at some point, they say something like hip hop gave black people a voice in America. Irish hip hop is going to give Irish people a voice in Ireland. And it was, it, it hit me. And I was like, damn, that's really, yeah. that's really cool. So that's that movie. Mm. It's, it's a true story about two and Michael Fassbender's in it. Yeah. Like we he remember has... what hip hop did to us, like to our culture. We were both old enough to kind of remember sure, that. Sure. Right. You in know, early nineties and... is when it really yeah. started to come big with, yeah, two. So this movie is set in 2019. I I was expecting like a 20, like you know, 1990s or something, but I didn't know it was so it was set in. Yeah, it's it's very recent so it's very, and yeah. um, yeah, it's it's well acted. Uh, Fastbender, Good. it's kind of funny to watch Fastbender's career, right? So we saw him recently in Next Goal Wins, that soccer oh, movie yeah. that tanked. Um. Which I and actually then, thought he was decent in. He was but... fine in. Yeah, I saw that in theaters as well. And it was it was fine enough. But yeah. it's just funny to see what he picks. And then he was in The Killer with Netflix and um, – yeah. oh, who was that? Not Soderbergh, right? Oh, um, Fincher. Fincher. Yeah, so he, he was Fincher. in that recently. And then, um, you know, he's been in – yeah, he's been in, he's been in a whole bunch of interesting – Shame and um, Alien Covenant and 300 yeah. and um, – He's all Prometheus. over the place. Yeah, a lot of the X-Men movies, 12 Years a Slave. So he's been – yeah, he's been in a lot of interesting movies. So so it was it's cool to see him in this. It obviously means something to him. He mm. must be Irish, British to care yeah. about this movie. Yeah. So, yeah, that's Kneecap. It comes out in two weeks. I, I recommend anyone who um, is looking for a sleeper hit to go see this. It's really fun. Awesome. Um, so what would you give it? Sorry, you said three and a half? Or? Yeah, yeah, three and a half. And sorry, what'd you give Horizon? Four. Wow. Wow. Yeah, so yeah, Michael Fassbender is an Irish actor. He was born in Hedleyburg, Okay, that makes Germany. sense. It's, I could see him getting the call to do this and think, oh yeah, I'll do this. Yeah. Um, so this 
we're this we might have an episode there's a lot going on in the next week or two i so we apologize if an episode doesn't happen um but we are i'm definitely going to see twisters ant has already seen it um so if you go to letterbox you can see his review ant paul 311 i think yep on yep. letterbox and um we are definitely going to see deadpool wolverine this weekend i am excited i hope it's good I hope oh, they don't. Sorry, Mitch. On Letterbox, I'm Ants Movies. Oh, sorry, Ants Movies. I didn't know either. So yes, you're on Instagram, man. But yeah, we're definitely going to yeah. see Deadpool, Wolverine. Is there anything else you're excited about that you can remember, or no? So, do you know Haley Bennett? Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, she's in a movie that I have been trying to see. I'm going to see it tomorrow night. Called. Oh, I forgot the name. Shit. Uh, the girl on the train. She was no. great in Swallow. Yes, that's her. So that no, movie? she's in this movie. She's in this uh, indie movie that has to do with one of the very first champagne families in France. Race for Glory. No, it's called like something Cloquet. Widow Cloquet. Widow Cloquet or Cloquet. Little Cloquet. You speak French. Tell us. me. I don't speak French. Little <laughs> Widow Cloquet. It's probably Cloquet. That's. I it. bet you don't pronounce the T, but I don't know. Yeah. Widow Clicquot, that's her. So anyway, I've been like, <laughs> I almost saw it today. I almost saw it yesterday. I'm seeing it tomorrow. God damn it. And uh, it's a limited release thing. Um, I don't know. She might get naked in it. So that's kind of what I'm going for. I just <laughs> she's very, there. very beautiful. and She is, and she's done that in other movies. So If you I'm haven't seen Swallow, I found that to be a really good movie. It's got some mental illness stuff. Yeah, that's a... About that's it. a um, yeah, that's a mind a, movie. So yeah, that's a mind. But um, besides that, um, Mother Couch is a movie with Ewan McGregor that we'll review next week. Possibly, Kinds of Kindness is uh, Yorgos Lanthimos's most recent movie. Daddy, we're kind of waiting. Sean Sorry. Penn, um, Thelma and Oddity is a yes. new horror movie, Shutter horror movie that I saw that I cannot wait to talk about and or see with you. So we're kind of hoping that Oddity and Kinds of Kindness, we're assuming they'll be on streaming or for rent soon. Um, Kinds of Kindness didn't do that great at the box office and it's already gone. Yeah. And Oddity is a Shudder movie. So we're kind of just like hoping and then we can talk about them both in one episode. Um, that is a little bit more fun. Yeah. Uh, like, you know, but anyways. Yeah. That's it. So let's close it up. If we don't see you guys this week, Ant, have a good trip. Uh, if I, I'll see you, you know, I'll I'll text you from LA. LA. Los you LA. must send me pictures. I will. Yes. Okay. Um. Yeah. And you know, I'll bring my um, I'll bring my, I'll bring my laptop, so we might be able to record. Okay. All right. I won't All bring right. mine. <laughs> Yeah, but right. I, I know, but I'm going to be gone longer, I think, than you. That's are. true. That is true. All, All right, right, everyone. Well, thank you guys for listening, and uh, we'll see you soon. Thank you for it's listening a, to the a, Hollywood. Per- oh, thank you for listening to the Hollywood Persona podcast. Thank you for listening to the Hollywood Persona podcast. You can find us on Instagram, go. YouTube. Thank you for listening to the Hollywood Persona podcast. You can find us on Instagram, YouTube, and Facebook at the Hollywood Persona. Feel free to email the show at the Hollywood Persona at gmail.com and make sure to rate, share, and follow on whatever platform you're listening to our show on. It's the little things that help. Thank you. And you, you little shithead, you're staying here.